Yo, yo, Romeo Navarro, representing B-Boy City, Hope for Hip Hop, out here at the Ibu Podcast, live and direct, talking about culture, talking about sports, breaking, MCing, DJing, graffiti, the four elements and all that. Stay tuned, Ibu. We got um, big girl Kate in the house. Hello. <laughs> I think this is her second time in Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Second time in Austin, a little bit uh, more time. Not one day, but two. Two days. Right. <laughs> I hope it's going to keep on growing. Yeah, more days, right? Yeah. Hopefully she can make it out to uh, Red Bull BC1 in August, but we'll see. We'll see, yeah, hopefully. So how's flight. your flight? My flight? Yeah. AM flight. AM how, flight. how can it be? <laughs> I mean, no, it was pretty good. I knocked out all the three, three hours. And... Uh, it was chill. So Kate is a Red Bull BC1 ambassador, originally hailing from Ukraine. Yes, Ukraine. That's where I'm from. Still so where, where, where are you at now? Like I live in LA now. You're in LA? Yeah, and I like it. Like it? So where, where were you originally at before LA? Before LA, I was like originally, originally I'm from Ukraine, Kharkiv city, and then I went to Florida. It was still COVID times at that time. So I was in Florida, I was pretty slow <laughs> yeah. with everything. So I wanted to add up a little bit more life, a little bit more activity. So LA is a good place to and be. And how long have you been in, in LA then? Like Okay, let's count. <laughs> <laughs> I moved in October. Right now it's what, June? Mm -hmm. Six months? Six seven? months. <gasps> one, two, three, one, two, three, six, seven, eight months. Okay. Nine. <laughs> um, Mathematics. So uh, I, I, just want, I want you to feel comfortable. We, we, we can talk about, you know, whatever you want to talk about. What, well, I want you to use this podcast to... Uh, talk to the people out there talk to me and then talk to the people out there um look i want what i want to know is um how did you get into um break it like when did you start did you have like family members who were in the crew or so uh -huh. i was pretty chill uh, kid mm -hmm. i started dancing not breaking but just overall dancing when i was six. Oh wow so i was dancing like what kind pretty of dance? much oh that's like all together we were doing hip-hop disco we were doing like a choreo together like with a lot of other kids and then acrobatics gymnastics it's just the place where you just give your kid and parents could be like Phew. <laughs> and then you like learn all this kind of stuff then later on I got mm, I was 14 this the puberty kicked in mm -hmm. And something changed, so, so I started to be like more crazier. I wanted to do something which other people don't do. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember it like like today, like um, my roommate, or not roommate, classmate, were was chilling on the back seat of the classroom. And there's like the place where you don't want to be into the subject. So you just like listen to music. And I was listening to the music and there was this song, I always forget how to proper pronounce this uh, group, mm -hmm. but it's uh, 903 till infinity, this song, <laughs> this cute song. I even have a tattoo now, which says hieroglyphics, my year of birth. Yeah, so hieroglyphics, yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm like, wow, this is cool. Like, wh what, what's the reason why you listen to this kind of music while we all were listening to like 50 Cent and stuff? <laughs> And uh, he's like, oh, I'm just going to this place called Extreme Dancing. You hear what I'm saying? Extreme Not Dancing. Yeah, that's <laughs> extreme what they call dancing. it, Extreme Dancing? Extreme Dancing. Oh, wow, yes, okay. Exactly. So I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. And it was just nearby, it's walking distance where they were doing this Extreme Dancing. I went there, and that's when I started, that was breaking. Uh, the way they were teaching, like, we was... Not for real, for real. Mm -hmm. Like it's more about just to like having kids I involved. Yeah. And I I was there for like a couple months. After that, I stopped. I went to my 
um, because that's how I, it's, it's a long story how yeah, I no, started. Yeah, no, no, we got so time. <coughs> so yeah, after that, the teaching school season was over. I went to my grandmother okay. to just chill, you know, she was collect a girl? strawberries. No, I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> no. Collect strawberries, you know, all this kind of stuff you yeah. have to do as a kid to help uh, your grandparents. Mm -hmm. And after that, I saw there is event which was in Kharkiv city. It was really popular at that time called Kharkiv. Yeah. Kharkiv city. Okay. Color life. Okay. That was the the name. So me not training three months, even though I didn't have really z like I had zero level at that time, just me like six step and couple freezes. I decided I'm gonna enter. <laughs> I okay. came to Kharkiv city, entered the battle, didn't even pass the prelim prelims. But there was that superstar girl who won. It's big girl Kim, and she's one of my best friends right now. Oh yeah? Yes. Your hero became your best friend? <laughs> now our friendship didn't start with all these butterflies and rainbows. Like, oh yeah. my God, yeah, let's be best friend. No. You wanted to take we her out. We hated each yeah, other. You wanted to take her out. <laughs> yes, at the first time, but then we like, we kind of overcame this. Where's, where's she from? Like, she she's from, from Kiev. Kiev. Yeah. And she's that's also in Ukraine? Yeah, it's the capital of Ukraine, and um, so yeah, I'm like, okay, I gotta train. I have to search for some nice so dancing so studios. So your your whole goal is to get her, get her, huh? I'm like, yeah, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna suck. <laughs> I wanna be good. I go. wanna improve myself. So I found this guy called uh, his name is Serge. Uh -huh. That was my first and the only probably teacher who actually taught me good and. I think we even have, you can see the similarity of how the way he dances and how I dance. What's his name? Serge. Serge? Serge. 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 Uh, yeah. Is that his b-boy name? or? Yeah. Okay. So, and that's how I started taking it serious. And I was really like, I know myself, when I'm on it, I'm on it. Like, I'm just crazy. Everything I was thinking at that time, it was how to practice. I really want to become better. And I remember he even let me just, I don't know, practice extra for free. He's like, oh, I see, like, you into it. Yeah, like, let's go, you can come here at this time. And yeah, that's how it started. And then I continued, after one year of practicing there, I continued my own journey mm -hmm. without a teacher. And my biggest success was that I ran away from my house. <laughs> you ran away? For breaking? Yeah. What? That's I told you, puberty kicked in. <laughs> I was yeah. like, okay, you know what? I'm going That's to. such like a, that's awesome. Like, I'm running away, mom. What did I'm your parents know? I ran away to uh, Roughneck Attack University. Roughneck Attack. It was 2009, I think. So oh, you no, went there or you ran away from home to go there? or like how Yes. I took it? a train, an hour train. What is it, an event? What was it like? It was in Kiev. It was in Kiev. Yeah. Okay. So I ran away, and I showed pretty good results. Like I made it to top eight, even though it was a lot of B girls who were. How old were you then? Huh? How old were you around? Seventeen. You said? Fifteen. Fifteen. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so what you your parents weren't, didn't like what you were doing, or? Um, yeah, they were like, no, you're not supposed to go there. You better go to school, stuff like that. But I'm wow. like, mom, but I'm just doing something which I like. And it's not something like I'm chilling outside and drinking or smoking. I was super healthy, little crazy kid, which wanted to break. That's all. So, and it was t hard because my parents at that time, they were kind of old standard mm -hmm. parents who just don't accept, like, yeah, come on, you just break your knees all the times. I have to pay for your doctor. Like, come on, can you yeah. choose something more soft? <laughs> <laughs> for like something for a girl? I'm like, I like it. I feel like I'm a badass. I want to do it. So did you go there by yourself or you, you had a people to there go There was with? a lot of people also okay. going okay. there. So th probably that's what it was, right? Just like going with a bunch of friends. But my were you, were you ever in a crew? Did you join a crew or? Oh, or let you, me you think. Were always I had a lot of crews made up. I barely remember, but yeah, I had a lot of crews. Yeah. Just like coming into a crew, then leaving. It was really fast life. <laughs> fast life. Okay. Um, so how's? I don't know if I want to get into that right now. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, so you got more serious and started. Uh, uh, entering these competitions or a big, big competition. What's your, what, what was your, uh, like your 
biggest competition when it started getting more serious? What was your first one? There was an outbreak in outbreak? 2013. Outbreak. Uh, I mean, no, the, we had a lot of big competitions in Ukraine. Uh -huh. We had this uh, event called Burn Battle School. It was pretty good. Like, um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty big. A lot of people were coming from like Russia, Belarus, back in the days. Not anymore. And um, outbreak was mm -hmm. like I know it started out in Florida, right? With Max, rest in peace, Max. Yeah. And what was his partner's name? MG? MG, yeah. Yeah, so as I got it correct, I think uh, European, the outbreak in Europe, mm -hmm. it was the qualifier. If you win it, you got a free ticket to outbreak in Florida. Oh, okay. And luckily in 2013, this is really interesting because uh, we used to have, we still have this event, Yalta Summer Jam. Yeah, I've seen footage. Yeah, so in 2013, uh, at that time, I was breaking for like almost four years, or oh, four years. Mm -hmm. And in uh, that event, it was just a few weeks prior outbreak Europe. So I didn't really dance there good. Like I, I didn't do good, but I knew that I'm going. It was actually my first trip abroad from Ukraine, the outb outbreak Europe was my first trip. So I was practicing, I'm like, okay, my goal is to pass the prelims. Prelims, yes. Yeah. Because I didn't do so good, yeah. So I ended up winning the whole thing. You, you won the whole thing? Yeah, I okay. won the whole thing. And the prize was for you to go to? To last outbreak in Florida. In Florida. That was the last one. Okay. So it was crazy. My English was on the zero at that time, and MG was talking to me, I'm like, I don't understand <laughs> what you're saying. I'm just so it's happy. It's pretty I good now, it. though. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I don't know what you're saying. So how did you do USA? in Florida? USA? Did you say USA? Huh? How'd you do in Florida when you when outbreak Florida? When you I got here? went to semifinals, I think. Okay. I lost to Jess Kills. She won the whole thing. Actually, being pregnant at that time already. Oh wow! Okay. Respect Jess Kills. Jess Kills, yes. Yeah. So it was it was cool. I remember. Yeah. Everyone was there. Sweet Technique was there. Nasty Ray was there. I just wish I was a little bit less shy and having better English. Yeah. Just to use the opportunity to build up with people. But I was just there in the corner. I was so scared. I don't know these people. Like, oh my God, it felt so uncomfortable. Where was your first, like, abroad, abroad, right? Trip out of the country? First trip to USA. USA? Okay. And second trip abroad. Wow. So it was okay. just outbreak, and the next one was outbreak in. USA. Um, so you're a Red Bull BC1, and how did that start for you? Like the competitions, when did that all that start? Um, so it started, I think, in 2018 when they made proper B Girl Battle. Because oh, as you okay. remember, yeah, yeah, we yeah, didn't yeah, have B Girl yes, Battle. Yes, I remember that. So and they in invited top 16 B Girls from all around the world. And yeah, I lost in top eight. But that was kind of like you birthed into the Red Bull BC1 circuit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's how it all started. And then, well, honestly, I don't even, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it started. <coughs> I don't know. Um, so you're on a tour now with BC1. So you uh, live in LA. I know I've seen you um, a couple of, uh, workshops you've been doing where, where, where are these workshops you I know you did some in the Bay right in Cali so no I started teaching workshops a really long time ago okay. I think like in 2015 and that's when I, I started to feel like I have a potential to it like I I feel like I can give advices to people mm -hmm. and, uh, and then can change a little bit of people's dance so like I'm able to give advices I'm able to teach people and able to explain how exactly you should do that mm -hmm. like those little um, hints hits <laughs> <laughs> it's okay yeah so and I was teaching so anywhere I was traveling around Europe it was always coming as a back like judging and teaching workshops so I kind of started to practice more how to like pack my knowledge it's not that I learn and know a lot it's just something like I can adapt learning process towards mm -hmm. the people so it's more clear and more fun 
yeah so that's how it started was teaching and yeah in california with red bull bc one tour it was also fun and chill a lot of people showed up finally for a workshop but barely see people coming yeah you better come so today gotta, to my workshop we got a workshop today at um the capoeira evolution dance studio yeah um 2 p.m so check her out we'll be um yes following her do her workshop um, um so i know being an, a red bull athlete uh just an active b-girl you travel a lot compete a lot so how do you stay like in shape like do you eat proper food i know do you get enough sleep i know it's hard <laughs> on your body just going to, from city to city i know i've done it and it's a toll and if um, I know you have to like kind of have to be disciplined, right, as far as? So in terms of food, I've, I have always ate good. Like I'm always eating good. I know yesterday, like we didn't eat meat, we ate salmon. I know like <laughs> salmon, yeah, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> salmon and mashed potato, my favorite dish. It's yeah. like the mix of gods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I like junk food sometimes, like French fries, it's my weak <laughs> weak weakness you kryptonite yep. but I don't feel uh, good like honestly I can't do it for a long time because I I don't feel good after that I feel bloated I feel heavy I feel lazy so and I started to listen to my body more in um, in the way of like of the food because the, the food is your energy mm -hmm. if you eat uh, junk food there is no energy inside I mean there is a lot but it's empty energy it just gives you fat but no energy oh. So that's why you have to, it's okay to give up and like, I don't know, eat something. It's better to allow yourself to do it than just keep it and then, you know, go all out and ruin your diet and everything. So yeah, uh, and especially in Ukraine, we don't have bad stuff as much as in USA. Mostly homegrown. <laughs> everything is homegrown. What you call organic for us is just regular food. <laughs> We don't have to put any or organic extra, like vegan and stuff like that. It's just came from the ground. It's already organic. I know you were telling me that um, your parents grow their own stuff, right? Yeah. Like strawberries. Yeah, everything is. The only problem is that it only grows at certain period of the year. Mm -hmm. So let's say fall, spring and winter, there is nothing. So it's only summertime. Okay. That's why I have to grow and somehow keep it for the rest of the year. Like preserve. Yeah. Do you train? How many times do you train a week? Like, do you train? I'll be honest with you right practice? now. Practice. <laughs> what do you do to stay in? I'm not really on top of the game. Active for past a uh, few months because of like my mental condition, my like the war in my country. So that completely shut me down yeah and um yeah i was just doing something which is completely different just to like you know make sure that i make money and send it back make money donate to ukrainian army save money so i was just like so focused on other things that now i step back and like okay so it's dangerous to leave um like in your head that it's when the war is over that's when i'm gonna come back what if it's not gonna be over tomorrow or in a month or in a year or so you have to keep on living and have to do what you have gotta do with breaking especially so normally i used to practice four times a week yes that's like my best schedule four times i'm practicing two three hours that's the best for me worked perfect so what's going on in in what's going on in ukraine is kind of heavy on your shoulder yeah so um come in uh for me, looking outside the box, I only see what's going on in Ukraine from the media. Right? I don't yes. really know what's going on. So how long has this war been happening? Like, So it started on February 24. It's 112 days already. Okay, you're keeping count like that, okay. And that's, that's horrible, you know, no one's ready for that. Like, no one is, telling you what to do when 
the missile just hits your house or house next to you. And I was talking to all my friends. There is so many b boys who got injured because of that. Who like who doesn't have who don't have anymore their own spot, their house, cars, all the materialistic stuff. Got everything a new that, everything that they worked for is gone, right? Yeah, so. that's it. Like now, start over. Go somewhere. I don't know. Ask for money or go to another country where no one waits for you. So it's really, really bad. Like it's horrible. And um, yeah, and uh, my friends, everyone tell you like that's a really different type of fear you feel. Like oh yeah, you're I scared of the height because yeah, if you jump, you might hurt yourself. This is, you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's gonna happen. Are you gonna survive next five minutes? You start to be more thankful, like crazy. Like mentally, it's r super crazy to like go through it and uh, realize it, so. And your, your family, like, are they still in Ukraine or did they get out or? My family got out. Okay. Like, um, yeah, they in Czech Republic right now my grandparents are still in ukraine because it's really hard to move them from there and they don't really want to leave or i mean to move mm -hmm. yeah so a lot of people stayed a lot of people because especially men right now they can't leave the country they have to stay they have to fight right um yeah kind of okay so yeah they can't leave the country so this this the b-boy the scene is gone because of the war like yeah. this. I mean, yeah, like it's stopped. Um, if you know guys uh, from Harkov, you know Flying Buddha? Yes. They created like, um, there is a few organizers who were doing hip hop events. Flying Buddha, they created, they called their group of people Iron Balls. Iron Balls, okay. They are doing humanitarian help for people right now under the missiles of they're like putting themselves in, in danger but helping people with food provide them with like food um pills medicaments all this kind of stuff sending them to around. ukraine oh they're driving around they're, they're driving around they're in ukraine and and kind of helping people bringing water collecting money so and these are the b-boys there flying Buddha that's, the that's the scene that's the scene there's the hip-hop scene right now what they do is i'm so proud like seeing what they actually do I'm really proud to see them and I hope they're gonna be safe and okay because they're doing a really great thing helping others who can't walk or like old people they can't go outside so yeah I mean I, c I can only imagine I mean you know I got a house <coughs> here in Austin and I really love and I take care of it and then one day just a missile lands and hits it and it's gone yeah and that's really just not even a like a I can't like I can't picture it you know? yeah no one can picture it like when there was other wars in in the whole world i couldn't picture it as well i was like what like how my street like it's a civilized country it's a civilized cities people are civilized we're in the middle of europe how can the war come here it's impossible um so what's the reason <laughs> for this war i want to know like what is what's why what i think about it is imperial ob ambitions of russia it's it's been so many wars they the russia started already they were fighting in moldavia they were fighting in chechnya it's a republic who wanted to be separated but they still attacked they were they started a whole bunch of wars for the past like 30 years same scenario same scenario they come saying like we're here to protect russian speaking people to protect to russian, protect speaking, russian speaking, speaking people because uh, you have a lot of patsies nazis in the country mm -hmm. and you don't allow people to speak russian it's their choice so we come here to protect all these wars have the same scenario safe so you say one by one by one <coughs> by one russian speaking people that lives in ukraine yes they russia consider them russian like me, I was speaking Russian all my conscious life. I don't think I'm Russian. I think I'm Ukrainian. But now it made me realize that, oh my God, I don't want to speak this language anymore. Like, I mean, for Ukrainian, it's okay to know three or more languages. Like we have a really developed people over there. 
so I know Russian and I speak Russian not because I made this choice I didn't make a choice no one asked me I, I was talking speaking sp um, Russian because everyone was speaking Russian in my family but that would be a completely different story if my parents would be Ukrainian so but I know Ukrainian as well so now I want to change it and talk Ukrainian to my parents to my friends which I'm already doing yes wow <sighs> So yeah, the reason why I started is this, and also I believe the east of Ukraine has a lot of resources, like such as gas and oil, mm -hmm. and they want to take that and also have available ground way to get to the Crimea, which they occupied in 2014. That's my idea. That's what I think. That's your kind of how you see it. Well. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, it is. So what do you do to, I know you talk about meditating. I know, does uh, dancing help out a lot as far as kind of, I know. My meditation right now is when I send money to Ukrainian people. That's my meditation. That's when I make money. I made the rule that I'm going to send at least $5 a day. At least, like, okay, I have to donate. Or if I see somebody on Instagram asking for uh, financial help, I'll send it. So uh, that's how I feel like, okay, I'm useful. I want to be useful. I'm not a good soldier. I can't provide people with humanitarian help, but I can financially help. It's still somebody in Ukraine is supposed to work because men are on the field. They fight in, the women help with like, or they run away with kids mm -hmm. to save their lives. And there are some people who need to support economy which is me and so many others who are abroad working. So the men are still holding it down, I know. Yes. I have a lot of people from my school who are uh, in territorial um, like protection mm -hmm. and also uh, who, are, who went to army. So they're there. So maybe you can do something here, you know, to help. You know, yeah, unfortunately people don't care. If it, I think it's because they don't really know. You know what I mean? Like me, like I said. They I'm know. They no, know. but not. So now talking to you. Yeah. And, you know, throughout these two days we've been talking, I got to know more about it. So I, now I care more because I know more, right? Like I said, like we, everybody goes through their everyday life. Yeah. And what they see on the media sometimes is fake news or what, you know, like, because we got to go do our everyday life, right? But the more people we know that are involved mm -hmm. and now I'm starting to care more because it's, f it's happening for real right yeah no it's happening for real and and I mean I'm I don't know anybody from Ukraine right yeah. you're the first person I've met in Ukraine and really talked to me about what's going on from out there yeah. I and mean, I've seen it on social media everybody's posting stuff on social media right so one thing that I'm saying is that I don't want that happening to me, you know, like I don't want, I don't want a war. I don't want the U.S. to go to war, right? I don't want, and um, some way, I want world peace, but for some reason, other people don't like, want world peace, right? I want life to be a lot easier to live, you know, create good memories, dance, music, but at the same time, evil is there <laughs> there's bad people yeah they want to make it hard harder for people to live you know so yeah it's already pretty easy to live in the u.s <laughs> yes what i mean it like i know it's like uh, we're spoiled out here right yeah you know? and so i feel like yeah because like um the problems people create and fight it's not that i want to put them down i believe there is a problem so of course yes but i believe it's like the country who never starved, who never had the, like really bad situations inside the country for the past 30, 40 years, you just kind of like create problems. All right, so I don't get enough salary. I want to go and protest. It's like, what, what if you just don't work good, <laughs> you know? What if you're just not good enough? What if you just, you know, so I'm not really like, 
I believe there is always a solution before you start complaining. Mm -hmm. Only if you tried all possible ways and you sure like, okay, this is the problem for real. We have to change it together. Okay. But I believe that there is some problems which don't exist, but people just want to have problems. You want to feel cool. You want to be a hero. You want to be like, you see, I went, I protested, I got what I wanted. But in the same time, it's like, mm. like USA is, a, is a, the most powerful economy in the world. There is whatever is gonna go anywhere, people gonna be good. The dollar is really strong currency. Economy is crazy, so there is no way you're gonna ruin. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say anything, but. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, we, I mean, we're just talking, right? So we can always, like, if you, if you say something that you don't want people to to hear, yeah, you can no. cut it out. So I'm no, just, but just overall. I'm just picking like your brain, you know what I mean? Like, I've never, you know, it's different. Like, you're in a hard situation right now, like, you Yeah. Know. But, yeah, there's people who feel way harder, of course. So me, I'm just, like, I'm chilling compared so to... You moved <coughs> to the U.S. right before the war, right? Like one year prior. Prior? Okay. So if you were there, what would, you, would you be with your family in what, what, other, what country did they go to? They went to Czech Republic Czech. because my dad was working there. Oh, and your dad's there now? Yeah. And how far is that? Is it in a different... It's a different country. It's... There are people flying over there, or wh wh how are they getting mm. over there? <laughs> there is missiles. What flights are you oh. talking about? <laughs> so, <laughs> no so flights, no nothing, no gas. Like my no mom gas. was traveling from my city. So to they walking. How did they ha driving? Driving. Okay. Driving and six days there was. She was driving by herself. She didn't have anybody. It was just her and two dogs. Wow. Six days, no gas. You go to gas station, there is no gas. People are trying to leave. You wait in line to get, I, d I think like, I don't know, five gallons of gas only per mm -hmm. person. You can't get more. You wanna fill it up and go? No. Five gallons for you, is it's done. Wait another line for two, three hours in another gas station. That's what made it even longer. So yeah, people just leave by car or the buses. They leave, they cross the border, which takes another 10 hours. Wow. So it's it's complicated, it's crazy. And then when you get there, is there a checkpoint? Yeah, there is a checkpoint. And luckily, I want to also give a huge shout out to people from Poland. Poland? They show the real brotherhood, honestly, because they were accepting Ukrainians like their own people. Like you just go to through the border and then there is Poland volunteers who have water, food, like some clothes for people because some people survived some people didn't get to experience how their houses gets ruined but some people saw horrible stuff like they lost, lost their kids or parents like they just completely abandoned by themselves the only hope they want to save their life like okay I lost everything but I don't want to die least I wanna, yeah I want to live and survive yeah so so Poland is really helped out a lot they Hosted people, great. So, big shout out to Poland. Shout out to Poland. Yo. Not only Poland, I feel bad right now. No, all the European countries. They host people, Czech Republic, uh, Hungary, what else? And then the people who crossed, because the most popular is Poland, is, is the border with Ukraine. So, mm -hmm. most people went there. So, Poland accepted if I'm not wrong, like close to 2 million people. Wow, okay. Extra, showing them hospitality, but also of course to all Europe because a lot of people travel afterwards. They don't wanna stay in one place. They're trying to kind of spread out. So yeah, a lot of people helped out, honestly. Like it's, especially in breaking hip hop community. Like we were yes. looking for a place to stay for people, I think in uh, Netherlands. Honestly, no, a lot of like Netherlands, uh, Germany and people from c community from Red Bull from the whole I know in a, in a hip-hop community anyway we like you know even though we don't speak the same language 
whenever we see each other anywhere in the world, we're always somehow yeah. taking care of each other. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And also, shout out to MG, MG. who created the fundraiser for Ukrainian B boys and B girls. You can still donate. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like also the problem with donations, why people don't want to donate, because I have my link on my account to support ARMY, because that's what we need. We don't have enough money to, for equipment for our soldiers. A lot of people don't want to donate to ARMY to like support war. I can get it, but also c I can get it, but it's okay. There is also other ways you want to support people, mm -hmm. which is Like MG. for food and stuff? Yeah, for food. Water. A lot of b-boys, they can't leave, so they and they can't work. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing going on right now. You kind of stuck there. You still want to eat. You still want to, you know. Their parents are also struggling. So if you want to support directly b-boys and b-girls, there is fundraiser. There is always. And they could they could access this um, link in your um, Instagram account or. How? You can just go to MG's account, I guess. Yeah. MG's or intact and um, yeah so they created that fundraiser specifically for b-boys and b-girls to support them and their families okay yeah yeah we'll probably um help with that yeah that's that would be great Whew. um it's kind of my mind is kind of yeah i can't even imagine the the stress you have you know i'm yeah, a firefighter and i go through a lot and i use breaking as my therapy teaching kids and stuff you know yeah but that is uh on another level yeah because for me i want to i dance the best when i'm relaxed when my mind is clear like even i'm pretty anxious person so even when i'm training and i'm like oh <gasps> Damn, I forgot to do laundry. Damn it. So I can't train. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's just stuck in my head. I just can't relax. I can't just, I'll do it later. Like, no, I, I'm supposed to do it before. And with war, it just doesn't leave my, he my head. Hockey, I just can't enjoy it. You can't it. shake it off, right? I, I'll do it. I'll do it for a battle. Like, I'll fake it. I'll do it, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be genuine. I'll fake the funk completely. I just want to get done with this and leave. So how long do you think the war is going to be going on? I don't know. I want to hope it's going to end this month. And then next month, uh, month I'm going to say the same. But I just, the war is going to last until you completely ruin Russian soldiers, Russian totalitarianism, and Russian government. Because the war can stop, but people in Russia support this war. They want it to be happening. But you were telling me that like the Russian shoulder soldiers are like kids, fr are just kids from... Not just kids, but they sent kids, which not supposed to go to war. They mm -hmm. only went to army to study, to learn how to be at war. They don't care, they send them there. Like, okay, go. Try your theory to practical way. You know, some people don't... I don't know if you can believe that or not. I mean, trust that information or not, but that's what people from the front tell, you know. A lot of uh, bro bloggers from, like a soldier, he has his own blog. He tells what is going on, recording videos, showing. That were on the Russian side? On the Ukrainian Russian side. Or oh, Ukrainian side, okay. And he shows what kind of soldiers they catch to like um, hostage. Yeah. So yeah, there is young kids, basically like 17, 18 years old. Um, what I was saying, when it's gonna over, yeah, because you can push Russia back and celebrate the win, but they're gonna attack again. Ukraine and Russia been into war situation for 300 years. 300 years. They were canceling Ukrainian language, they were canceling Ukrainian books when it was like Russian Empire kind of times, long time ago. Yeah, so it's been going on. It's been yeah, going this is on. Some stuff I only see on movies and stuff, man. It's for real, for real. Like yeah. <laughs> just hope Russia falls apart everyone every republic is gonna have their own independence so Russia by itself gonna come back to their natural territory which is way smaller than it is right now and that's it and the power is lost so I hope 
because after all these terrible times they g gave to Ukrainian people and um, last thing I want to say like those excuses from Russian people who say like oh but we didn't choose this president oh but we didn't attack you personally oh but what what can we do like we didn't attack you like did I come to your house no Putin also didn't come to my house but who are these 250,000 soldiers are they not Russian who are these guys why their mothers let them go where is their, their sisters where their friends why they let them go where are they why they stay silent why they let this happen this is Russians you may be against the war but I just don't see many actions from you how can I know you against in Russia there is 140 million people living 140 million and they're being silent I don't see but we're gonna go to jail I'm sorry all right that's why <laughs> we don't like you that's that's the reason and until these people just like trying to blame like oh it's Putin this is this is your country you choose your president you choose it oh but we didn't choose it then where was your protest when you didn't choose when they faked the eliminations where were you oh you just you got used to being silent you get used to thinking that your voice doesn't matter that's why Ukrainians don't like Russians because we know that our voice matters we didn't like our president in 2014 we went outside they killed a lot of people then a million people went outside we're like we want you out and he got out so that's the difference between us I'm not saying all Russians are bad most of them are bad you're saying but you guys stand up for your rights like you know you guys don't like the president yeah and that's what different Th that's the difference yeah so you can say whatever you say like yeah but some people still stand up but whenever you protest you probably know also in america the only protest which can be heard is with big amount when it's a lot of people are unsatisfied with something that's when you get hurt yeah. but if there is a 140 million people in russia and the protest is 5000 what is this amount like yeah not to lower thanks to those 5,000 who said stop the war but where is another 135 million where are they I mean no 5 million 139 <laughs> sorry but you know 5,000 compared to 140 million like at least if 40 million w went outside that would be a deal but they didn't do it so so if there's anything you can say to the public, you got anything to say? I want to say Slava Ukraini. I know Ukraine is going to win. I know this is a really, really brave and very determined nation, smart nation. It's going to win for sure. This is good side and there is bad side. Ukraine is a good side. Russia is a bad side. So I want to wish Russian people who don't want to be part of the North Korea, which Russia is slowly becoming, to realize it as fast as you can, step on the good side and build your life somewhere where human life is appreciated, when human rights and voices is appreciated, and live in those kind of countries. And uh, for other people, thank you so much for support financial with informational support with any kind of support is appreciated and uh, yeah fuck you Putin <laughs> um, I want to hear you uh, uh, speak Ukrainian you want to say something to my Austin folks to, in Ukrainian Доброго дня пані та панове я вітаю вас у славному місті Остин ми зараз на подкасті де я розповідаю як і Путін хуйло і які українці дуже прекрасні люди і як скоро я хочу повернутися додому коли в мене буде така нагода першим літаком лечу додому до вас любі друзі українці дуже сумую сподіваюсь скоро побачимось awesome I don't know what she said but it sounded great <laughs> um, so on behalf of the Austin hip hop scene hope for hip hop I want to say thank you for coming to Austin. Oh, mm. that's it? I mean, <laughs> we could talk some more. I just got it. 
Let's switch the subject. Let's talk about breakdance now. Okay, okay, <gasps> okay. Breaking, breaking. Um. <laughs> And yeah, we need to talk about something nice, you know? Okay. Something like to finish it on a positive note. Okay. Also. Um, let's, what do you think about Austin? I know we went sightseeing yesterday. Oh, yeah, I like it. I like when the city has life, when it's super alive, a lot of people doing their own stuff, people with dogs, skateboards, canoeing, running, swimming. Uh, some people on the phone doing their business. Mm -hmm. So it's that's what I like. It, that what reminds me honestly uh, of Ukraine a little bit. Mm -hmm. That different, like, uh, colorful palette, yes. contrast. Yes. People chilling, people working, and that's what makes the city alive. Super cool. I like it. So we went to the springs yesterday. You like the springs? I know no Austin is yeah. known for its springs. I want to go um, to real ones when I'm back. When yeah. I'm back. Yeah, the local, the local yeah. holes. The green belt, Camus Hole. Yeah. Um, so today, you're not really judging anything. What's your favorite part as far as in the dance? Do you like to compete? The workshops, teaching kids, judging? Uh, judging is just uh, <laughs> not good for karma. <laughs> <laughs> no? Why, because people kind of hate on you for like not like voting uh, for them? It's always going to be hated. You're always going to be not the good one. You know, people are always going to have questions to it. But I have an answer. It's like, I know it's responsibility for me if I choose. You don't know how people take serious those competitions. Like, I remember, it's like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's okay. No, it's a big deal for me. Yeah. Like, I was preparing. I want to know why. Yeah. But I never really ask judges why I lost. I, I, I always know why I lost. So there's, if if you would win 100%, everyone would pick for you, even the worst judge in the world. If it if you make it so obvious, yeah. But of course, breaking is not always about super clear, like you won, you lose. But as a dancer, that's your goal, to make it super clear. But as a judge, also to figure out what is like, e like the equality, like you can be a super power head, let's say, and super stylish guy, how can you judge it? Like yeah. it's too different, but you still have to be able to see who is be doing his thing better. So it's fun, but I like workshops and I like just regular jams with no judges. Judges. Just ciphers. Just to dance to nice music, which is not uh, forbidden to use for the rights. Not too much plastic music. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only thing about now about the competition is um, a lot of the music that we listen to are not allowed to be played because the you know rights and because all that. of the rights. But also, I know this music is made, mm -hmm. so I'm not really not really like specialized in music industry. I don't know, but just the question: Is it possible to create like have a band and write those beats mm -hmm. like with? The drums, we, yes, the guitar. We, we have one in, in Austin also, kind of like Fusic in Florida, a, a band called Brown Out in Austin. Mm -hmm. And they pretty much, because they were the ones um, that, um, I think Adrian Quesada was part of uh, Brown Out. He was the producer for all the sounds for our documentary Inside the Circle. Mm -hmm. So the band kind of like plays all those similarity to those to those beats yeah but also to be able to use this kind of beats on a regular basis because yes. just for dancers i feel like we all get tired of the same beats for six years same thing same you have to hit five six seven one with their chair you know yeah. it's like oh yeah. so you play something more maybe we should uh started um having more bands like yeah create more musicians or fine musicians to fine play. musicians but also because sometimes i feel like the bands the band itself is really cool but it's supposed to be bands who are familiar with dancers mm -hmm. to play music to dance because sometimes it's not a dancing music like they just play something but it's not funky but it's it's still live it's still better you know what i mean yeah. like, so the, the so band is like music they know this music for dancers for yes. b-boys 
um, maybe we should, uh, some of us start picking up instruments, like, you know, <laughs> retired B-boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so just jams, yeah, jams bring joy to it again. Competitions less co are less cool. competitions. I mean, I know if there's been a lot of competitions. Sorry, can I say something as well? Oh, yeah, go ahead. It's like, <coughs> you can choose. Now you can choose. You want to do competition? Good. Do it. But we need more jams just so it can be equal. Because yeah. right now we only see competition. People come, sit in the corner, stretch, wait for the battle, do two rounds, go back to the corner. It's competition, but we don't have that when you just come in, for not soul. to win, yeah, just to hang out, you crash, you cannot crash, whatever you want to do, just, it's like. It's just the jams are good for your soul, like, you know, just to, I understand perfectly as far yeah. as like. Um, More jams. Just, I think um, in the b-boy scene in different cities, it's also our job to just to throw these jams. Like, I, I know I used to have a monthly event in Austin and I want to bring it back. Those no no con it was, it was like those planet we call them planet rock parties, and it was just music and ciphers. That's it, right? And those were like it's something that the community needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, but also like also for the next generation, like if all they see is competitions, they would think that the b boy scene is only for competition. So yeah, no. I think I want the culture to know that, like you said, there's two different, there's the competition level, and then there's also the just to cipher and get down and have a good time. It's just yeah. good for your soul. Yeah, for sure. It's, it should be kind of equal, Yeah. both. And uh, that's, I think, up to, like, up to people like me, because I, I throw the jams, I threw the B-Boy City. I've been doing it for 25 years now, and I, we got to have those ciphers and just monthly events and just for people to get down or else they just go back to their garage and studios and start practicing yeah. or stop practicing because the the events for uh, like sport events is not for them yes they don't like it so they're like okay so where can I go hang out with people oh nowhere okay I guess I'm gonna stay in my garage or even quit Yes, that's why, um, you know, that's why I started these park jams, like once, like once a month, you know, and then also I want to do the, not the, more for the older kids, older heads, right, for the clubs, and this park jams are for like the all community, the parents and the kids, yeah, but then, but we also need the, for the, uh, for the, what, 18 and up, yeah, for Cyphers. those. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> um, what else? <coughs> Today your workshop starts at 2 p.m. You got something planned? Um, so I have material um, most of the time I teach. Because I never taught in uh, Texas, so I have a lot of stuff I want to teach. So I want to see the level of the people who showed up, mm -hmm. ask them genuinely. So I want to make it interesting because, yeah, sometimes I, I come with the program and there is just little kids. Oh. And, like, they, they don't get it. Yes. Yeah. I need to make it a little bit more simple for okay. them. So, yeah, I'll see, but, yeah, I'm oh, excited. Oh, I, I, I had another question. So what do you think about the sport? The the breaking going into the Olympics, like. Oh, I, <laughs> I have mixed feelings. You have now. mixed feelings. <laughs> well. <laughs> At first, it sounded sounded like, oh wow, that's great, you know. The Olympics. Imagine yes. if you win Olympics, you are like a hero of the of your country. It's so many working places for other people, but now I feel like it just kind of takes away the joy from it. It started to look weird. Like the battles look weird. Like kind of staged. I don't know how to say it. It's like because I feel like as well, no one showed up in the crowd like that. You can probably see like parents of the kids. 
they can support their kids, but there is not that vibe. It's like, oh, have you seen that move, you know? Yes. B-boys don't show up to just be there. Competitions only for competitors. And there is no cipher, so what's the point to come in, can't go there? So that's the part I don't like. Also, the lo like you have to wait a long time. Is that when you just go to event and it's like a few contests and the rest is just ciphers and you always warmed up there you like do two hours uh, two, two rounds four hours wait you know mm. and do whatever you can chill but you, you like always anxious you want to stay focused but you can't so i don't know olympics it's cool again for people who are super dedicated they like the sport way of it but yeah so I think that's why we got to keep it balanced, right? So we have to have these sports events. And the most important thing now is to have these culture events. That way it doesn't lose yeah. lose the, the soul culture of the culture. Culture events or even, it's okay to have battles. Like battles are, is cool. Yeah. It's just, just one battle all together, like mm -hmm. one on one. B-boy or B-girl or kid, doesn't matter. Just come enter this battle. The way you're gonna choose person, he has to battle in cipher for ten hours. <laughs> I don't know how to test, but you yeah. know, so to like make it cool, to make it fun. Yeah. So like this B Boy City, I've, I've always kept it raw. I like to keep it raw, and just kind of just one battle, crew on crew, and pretty much no rules, like uh, no limits. That way you can have the how we used to have it the old days, thirty versus thirty, and just. Yeah, go no, at it you know what I mean cool. <laughs> yeah so I mean I, I try to keep it that way in the sense of just keeping the essence of the culture and forever you know there's times they were like well we we, we can have uh, the you know they want to have some like a sports event inside b-boy city and I'm like well we can that's why we have Texas breaking open which is the sport event mm -hmm. b-boy city been going out for almost 25 years now well 25 years this year and I want to keep you as raw as possible that way my son and the next generation can see the difference when they go to do two different events right but wow b-boy city is different dad everybody's screaming everybody's like you know and then you go to another event it's just kind of we're like just waiting for the yeah. judges points and stuff you know but I think both the sport event it's not gonna go anywhere. I think it because you know, it's gonna keep going, but it's up to us, like. Yeah, no, it's up to us. For it's sure. up to us to keep these j jams and culture events going. Yeah. And that's why I can't stop. I can't like. I can't retire. Yeah. That's why I feel as well that amount of people is is lowering each year. Mm -hmm. Not many people show up because that fun part is lost. Yes. And that's, that's completely. the main thing that we cannot lose is, <coughs> bless you, cannot <coughs> lose is when it becomes too much of a job, a lot of the, the B-boys and B-girls will walk away, right? Yeah. When it's fun and you're having a good time, I, I remember just, you know, like the few events back in the days, it's two o'clock in the morning, three in the morning, we're still going, right? Because it was everybody was having a good time. Now it's like, okay, after it's like, yo, you guys are already getting tired because the fun of it is, is, is disappearing. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> I've seen events, okay, like B-Boy City 12, the venue was like, it's two o'clock, you guys gotta get out. And we end up finishing the battle outside in the streets. But everybody was still energized, right? And it's almost three o'clock in the morning. And people were still, en the energy was still there. And now I see it's like, 11:30. I'm like, Yo, why are you guys already tired? And because it's the energy. Right? So at my at B Boy City, I try to keep up that keep that energy up. If you the electricity in the ciphers is, it can it can last forever if you yeah. have it have the right recipe for for yeah. the for the jam. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I haven't seen people dancing on the street like that or badly in, in a while. Those are like, like those are like concrete, you know, 
call outs. Yeah. Like, I haven't seen that in a minute. Like, people would just call people out, like, yo, what's up? <laughs> it's like, yo. Yeah, yeah. Those are the fun days. Well. Yeah. I want to say thank you. Thank you for having me, listening. Yes, <laughs> yes. So much. Uh, I know you guys, you have a lot to to say, and I'm glad you you, you said it. Yeah, I'm glad I said it. I feel relieved. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm, uh, you know, I want to do my part, you know, as far as supporting whatever I can do, you know. Yes. Um, I think each each one of us can do a part like what you're doing, you know, and I can do something, and each if each everybody can do a little part, it becomes a big. Yeah. A big contribution. Yeah, just like. You know, I feel like. In terms of donation, people think like you have to donate a lot of money right away, like, I don't know, $50. No, you don't need to. It would be better if you donate like $5. Yeah, even a dollar. If a million if a million people will donate a dollar, that's a million dollars. It's a million dollars <laughs> right there, you know? One dollar. Yeah. It's <coughs> don't be scared of small amount. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's better if you donate one dollar than nothing. Than nothing. I got you. So, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for you for coming out to Austin and Thank you for having me. me.